Okay, in this video I'm going to find the intervals of increase and decrease of a trigonometric function. And this is actually going to be problem number 459 from my book, 1001 Calculus Problems for Dummies. And you can get that on my website, patrickjmt.com, if you're interested. So, just a big book of uh, uh, practice problems with solutions. I highly recommend it. Okay, so here we have the function 2 times cosine x minus cosine of the quantity 2x, and we're going to do this on the interval 0 to 2 pi. So the first thing we have to do is to find the derivative. Okay, so f prime of x. Recall that the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine x. We'll have to use the chain rule on our second term. So again, the derivative of cosine, that's going to be negative sine. We leave the inside portion alone, that 2x. But then by the chain rule, we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which will give us positive 2, since the derivative of 2x is just 2. And I'm going to simplify this, negative 2, sine x. You could go ahead and start factoring. Um, I'm going to leave it alone here for, for the moment. So we'll have plus 2 sine of 2x. Now, to make life a little bit easier, okay, we could factor out a 2, but notice we have a sine x and a sine of 2x. I'm going to use a trig identity on this, this sine of 2x. So we've got negative 2 times sine x plus 2 times. Recall that the trig identity for sine of 2x is 2 sine x times cosine x. So there's my trig identity. And I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and factor this now. So I'm even going to factor out a, uh, well I'm going to factor out a positive 2 here. Notice both terms involve sine x. So I can also factor out sine x. To get the first term back I would just need to multiply by negative 1. So right, negative 1 multiplied by 2 sine x will give me my negative 2 sine x. We factored out a positive 2. We're still going to need another 2. And it looks like we're missing the cosine x term. And you could rewrite this even one more time. I don't know. Certainly not necessary, necessary but maybe it looks a little bit better. I'm just going to write the stuff in the parentheses as 2 cosine x minus 1. Okay, so again, we're doing this on the interval 0 to 2 pi, so we have to set each factor equal to 0. Well, the, the 2 sine x, if we set 2 sine x equal to 0, that just means we have to determine where sine of x equals 0. And I always have to think about the unit circle. Well, sine represents the y-coordinate, so x is going to equal um, 0 pi and 2 pi, right at 0 pi and 2 pi, we'll have sine of each of those values will be equal to 0. The next one we'll have to do, we'll have to take 2 times cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. Well, if we add 1 over and divide by 2, we'll get cosine of x equals 1 half. Well, where does cosine of x equal 1 half? One of the angles is at pi over 3. Right at the angle pi over 3, that hits the unit circle at the ordered pair 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. And I think the only other place where that's going to happen, since we're going from 0 to 2 pi, um, the one other place where that's going to happen is going to be down here in the in the fourth quadrant, and that's going to correspond to the angle 5 pi over 3. And again, you could get that by thinking, well, if you went all the way around, that would be 2 pi radians, but then we would have to subtract away pi over 3 to get to that angle that's in the the fourth quadrant. And 2 pi minus pi over 3, after you get common denominators, and simplify, that's going to give you 5 pi over 3. So at this point, it's just going to be a little bit tedious. We have to check a bunch of intervals. So let's see, we would have to check from the interval from 0 to pi over 3. So from 0 to pi over 3, we would have to check on the interval pi over 3 
to pi, we would have to check from pi up to 5 pi over 3, and then we would have to check from 5 pi over 3 up to 2 pi. So four inter intervals to check here, and again, all I have to do is I just take a point from each interval and I put it into my derivative, and I'm just thinking, is that going to be positive or negative? So let's see here, we've got 2 cosine of x minus 1. All right, so let's check these here. So maybe from the interval from 0 to pi over 3. So on this interval, I'm going to use the point. Well, from 0 to pi over 3, we could use, I guess, pi over 4. That would work. So if we use the point uh, pi over 4, f prime of pi over 4, that's going to be 2 times sine of pi over 4, multiplied by 2 times cosine of pi over 4 minus 1. And again, all I'm really interested in is, is it going to be positive or negative? That's really all I'm thinking about. And you could start actually doing the arithmetic, you know, sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Since we're in the, the first quadrant, I know that sine of pi over 4 multiplied by 2, that's going to give me some positive number. 2 times cosine of pi over 4, well, again, as I, if I take, um, you know, I'm thinking if I move along the, the unit circle, if I move along the unit circle, the x-coordinate is going to be now bigger than a half. So I'm going to get something 2 times a number bigger than a half will be bigger than 1. So I'll have a, a number larger than 1 minus 1. That's also going to give me a positive number. So that's going to give me a positive number, which is greater than 0. So that tells me on this interval my function is going to be increasing. So again, I'm just thinking about, you know, is it positive or negative when I substitute in that value and do the arithmetic. Well, let's see, from pi over 3 to pi, and again, of course, if you don't like this line of reasoning, actually do the arithmetic, you know, substitute in the value for sine of pi over 4, substitute in the value for cosine of pi over 4. On the interval pi over, the interval pi over 3 to pi, well, I'm going to use pi over 2. And in this case, uh, if we substitute in pi over 2, I am going to go ahead and do the arithmetic all at once. We'll have 2 times the sine of pi over 2, but sine of pi over 2, since I'm at the top of the unit circle, that's going to equal 1. Cosine of pi over 2 is going to be equal to 0. So I'm going to have 2 multiplied by negative 1. That's going to give me just negative 2, which is certainly less than 0. So over this interval, I know that the function is going to be decreasing. So on the interval pi over 3 to pi, my function is decreasing. And now we've just got two more intervals to check. Um, so let's see, on the interval pi up to 5 pi over 3, I'm going to use the, I'm going to use the point uh, 3 pi over 2. And again, I like to use that point because I know that uh, cosine and sine, I'm going to get easy values uh, for cosine and sine. Those are easy for me to evaluate. So at 3 pi over 2, I'm going to have 2 times sine of 3 pi over 2, but now I'm at the bottom of the unit circle. Well, sine of 3 pi over 2, that's going to give me negative 1. Again, cosine of 3 pi over 2, since I'm at the bottom of the unit circle, that's going to be 0. So I'm going to 0 minus 1. So now I've got negative 2 multiplied by negative 1. Negative 2 multiplied by negative 1 is going to be positive 2, which is certainly greater than 0. So on the interval from pi to 5 pi over 3, I know that my function is increasing. Last but not least, on the interval 5 pi over 3 up to 2 pi. Okay, so there was the angle 5 pi over 3. Um, we've got to use some angle in there. How about we use 7 pi over 4? And again, on terms, of, if you want to think about the unit circle, 
that's going to hit at square root of 2 over 2, comma, negative square root of 2 over 2. So again, I'm just substituting this into my derivative. So f prime of 7 pi over 4, that's going to be 2 times sine of 7 pi over 4, multiplied by 2 times cosine of 7 pi over 4 minus 1. I'm going to use the same reasoning that I did in my first one. Sine of 7 pi over 4, since I know that I'm in the fourth quadrant, sine of 7 pi over 4 is going to be a negative number. 2 times a negative number, that's going to give me some negative number. Cosine of 7 pi over 4, well, the x-coordinate is going to be, on the unit circle, will be larger than 1 half. So 2 times that number will be larger than 1. If I take a number larger than 1 and subtract 1, it's still going to be a positive number. But a negative times a positive is going to give me a negative number, which is certainly less than 0. So I know on this interval, 5 pi over 3 to 2 pi, that my function is decreasing. So... All right, that's uh, all there is to it. Just a matter of taking derivatives using a trig identity. And then it's just a lot of arithmetic, you know, just sort of uh, thinking about whether, whether the derivative is positive or negative over each of those given intervals.